We're going to take you to the kitchen now. And if you've ever been to San Sebastian in Spain, chances are you've tasted one of the culinary capital's famous cheesecakes. Our resident foodie, Alice Zaslavsky, is here for a treat. Alice, it's been a while and I can't believe that you're turning up and delivering this to us. It's beautiful. Here I am. Olay. Uh, <laughs> well, any way that we can travel these days is a good way to travel, Lisa Miller. And what better way to travel than with our taste buds? Well, why did you first sort of get introduced to this? Or what's the connection between you and these cheesecakes? There is a very deep and heartfelt connection with these cheesecakes, Lisa Miller. They were actually something that my husband and I ate every night on our honeymoon. We chose San Sebastian. For any foodies out there, they would know that San Sebastian is one of the, the most sort of foodie capitals of the world because of this thing called Pinchos, which is their version of tapas. And they're kind of like little finger foods and you can go from uh, Pinchos bar to Pinchos bar, choosing foods. And everybody congregates in this place called La Vigna for these Basque cheesecakes and the unique thing about the cheesecake is the burnt top and the gooey middle and there's an Australian connection too because Australian food writer Danny Vallant went to Basque to the region to San Sebastian a little while after my honeymoon and brought the recipe home I implored her Danny please get the recipe from this chef so we can all make it and as a result of that really I contend that Danny's the reason why people know Basque cheesecakes all over the world because she made a recipe that was so easy so I've adapted her recipe made it even easier because I know that everybody watching at home is thinking hmm cheesecake that sounds like something for an occasion no 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 we're making <laughs> mini Basque cheesecakes that you can enjoy any night of the week. OK, through the, the magic of, of television, uh, you can <laughs> transport the cheesecake you've been making sure to us can. right here in the uh, News Breakfast studio, yes. Alice. Yes, here you go. Here's a couple of cheesecakes I prepared earlier. And <laughs> oh, they are, they're just like... <laughs> just like that. Oh, we get Jono just as like well. That. <laughs> That's it. Well, you know, you've got to, you've got to uh, make sure that everybody is catered for. And these actually can be made gluten-free as well. They're mm. individual cheesecakes. You can, uh, they're almost like a mini muffin, I suppose. And you can serve them with fresh fruit. So we've got some raspberries there for you. And what I love about them is that you can get the kids involved in making them. So, you know, our little three-year-old was cracking eggs and, uh, and mixing ingredients together for the cheesecake. And if you use a blender, you don't really... Really neat. I can hear the paper rustling, so I'm glad to know that they're being enjoyed. <laughs> and, and of course, the, the best part about them is that if you use a stand mixer or a blender, really, really easy. And burning them is actually how you know that you've cooked them well. So if you're the sort of person that goes into a kitchen and thinks, uh oh, I'm going to burn everything, well, you're in luck because these mm. ones, when you burn them, that's when they are at their best. It's the, the caramelization on the top of the cheesecake that really takes the flavor to the next level. It's what do you think? It's, oh, yeah, beautiful. It's a fine line, though, burning it, isn't it? I, I, I fear that I'd make a charcoal mess of these mm. cheesecakes. When, when do you know when the bur uh, for the burning process enough is enough? Uh, well, it's kind of a personal preference, Michael Rowland, and that is actually really good insight for me because I've always wondered how I can get you into the kitchen, so I think <laughs> I need to move you past the point of fear of worrying that you're going to burn everything to a crisp because mm. guess what? You control the heat. The heat does not control you, mm. and just because you open the oven door on these doesn't mean they're going to drop. They're not a souffle, so you can just check them, and, you know, a minute over is fine, so, you know, take them to as far as you're comfortable in the burn okay. department. I, I want a few more tips. So the, this is really yummy and I, I love, I, I just feel like cheesecakes take too much time and they're too hard and so they just That's sort it. of get put to the side for me. Yes, so any cheesecake batter you could actually set into mini moulds like just your straight up muffin tin or any batter indeed. So we're talking cheesecake today, but it could be, say, a zucchini slice recipe. So rather than making it in one big baking tray, if you make it in those little individual muffin tins and you can use little patty pans or baking paper, you can then send those to school or you can take them to work or even freeze them and you can have them whenever you like. And because you are baking them in smaller containers, they take less time to cook, less time to set. That's the reason, to be honest, it's the setting time for cheesecake like this that really puts me off because mm. I want to get right into it. You know, I want to crack into it as soon as it comes out of the oven. And these ones, within 10 minutes, pull them out and uh, pull them out of the muffin tin and they're ready to go. Mm. And so just in case someone didn't eat all of them in one go, how long could they last? 
Lisa Miller, a fine question indeed. These will last up to five days in the fridge, but guess what? You can freeze them, thaw them overnight, and then you can just pull the one out. You know, let's say you're having a night in on the couch and you think, hmm, I could really use an emergency cheesecake. <laughs> well, guess what? You've got them in Brilliant. the freezer, ready to go. You know, six or seven ingredients, all stuff that you should have in the fridge or the pantry. And truly, it's kind of like a, you know, 25-minute task. And you'll, you'll thank past you for what future you is enjoying. <laughs> Alice Zaslavsky, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. We're going to put this recipe up on the socials and all the rest of it so people can Definitely. track it down and give it a go. And I have to say, none of these cheesecakes, uh, I can reliably say, will not ma will make it at the freezer. Uh, they've been eyed. <laughs> I can't believe they've actually lasted this long people. for this uh, segment, quite frankly, Alice. Thank it's you, It's a Alice. committed crew, Lisa Miller. Thank <laughs> they you, They are Mike. committed. Cheerio, Have everyone. a great day. <laughs> See ya. You too.